new stars would emerge, step off the sideline, and write their own chapter in 49er history. A pinpoint perfect pass by quarterback Tim Rattay. Kevin Barlow putting on an amazing show today. Big beat drive, got it! Brandon Lloyd, unbelievable play! The 49ers held together through veteran leadership, both silent and vocal. Oh, I love Sunday, best day of the week. We are stuffing all day long! Led by a vastly improved and aggressive defense and under the tutelage of head coach Dennis Erickson, San Francisco entered into a new era of 49er football. The foundation began last May during off-season minicamp. That's a good throw, Tim. Don't get in a hurry, too quick. Yeah, just a little quick. Make sure that guard goes, okay? okay. Brandon, we're gonna throw the football to you. Seven steps, boom, you're looking for the ball. If it's three deep, well, you're gonna get it. Okay, let's go, everybody up, bring it in, let's go. That's how to work, man. That's, that's, that's how to fly around and practice. That's what it's all about. Hey, hard work on three. One, two, three, hard, hard. work! Ready to go out and play like we're capable of playing. Let's put the hammer down on our ass right now. Right now, let's go out and play with pride. Show everybody what we're about. In Erickson's debut as the 49ers head coach, he proved his team wasn't just about pride, but about scoring points. Lots of points. The 49ers first trip to the end zone finished a 71 yard drive. Subsequent visits would be significantly shorter thanks to field position provided by an impenetrable defense. The Niners hounded the Bears Cordell Stewart all day, sacking him five times and forcing two fumbles. A shot right there. That was a shot. But their defensive domination wasn't just restricted to the ground. Throws to the right side and it's intercepted. Picked up by the 49ers plumber. Throws at the left sideline. We got another. 49ers take it again, this time Jimmy Williams, and it's picked and it's gone. On that coming at the 40, down to the other 40, down to the 30, down to the 20, down to the 10. Strolls into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. 26 points off turnovers prove the cliche, the best offense is a good defense. The victory was San Francisco's biggest since 1989. In week two, the 49ers defense would be tested against Marshall Falk and the Rams' high-powered offense. Although they held Falk to just 57 yards on the ground, the Rams kept producing points. With 19 seconds left in the fourth quarter, the Niners found the end zone, forcing the game into overtime. After winning the coin toss, the Rams marched down the field and set up for the final play of the game. Win the game for the Rams. Here's the kick. It is up. It is. Last-minute losses continued the following week against the Cleveland Browns. 12-7, San Francisco. Holcomb again in the shotgun. Pass to the goal line. He's got it. You never know. That's why they play the game. Stranger things have happened. In 2003, the 49ers lost six of nine games by a touchdown or less. But where there was disappointment, there was resolve to do better. After a three-game losing streak, San Francisco needed a win in Week 5 versus the Detroit Lions. And although ex-Niners coach Steve Mariucci was given a warm welcome from his old offensive players, he was not greeted as fondly by the defense. Bill, and it is picked off. San Francisco has it. Now the Niners are in business. Turn over the touchdown! Turn over the touchdown! Though once familiar with the Niners' offense, Mooch found himself the victim of a new offensive machine fueled with unfamiliar playmakers. Pass over the middle. He's got Walker as tight end. He steps over one lion and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Rookie Aaron Walker's first NFL touchdown pushed the Niners up by seven going into the second half. Fearing another down-to-the-wire game, the Niners' defense stepped up and shut down Detroit's production, holding the Lions to 128 total yards after halftime. Their effort, both on the ground and in the air, made it impossible for the Lions to play with any consistency, forcing Harrington to take ill-advised chances. Intercepted. They're done. Intercepted by San Francisco at the 11-yard line. It is picked off, and the Niners have wrapped it up. After his first two wins, it appeared a traditionally offensive coach found faith in his secondary. 
Cornerbacks Mike Rump and Ahmed Plummer guarded the perimeter with ferocious determination, often shutting down a receiver on the run or simply stealing the ball from them. The last line of defense was provided by safety Tony Parrish. The trio had over 190 tackles, 40 passes defensed, and 16 interceptions, most of which were provided by Parrish, who tied the league high with nine. First down, he's got a pass up the middle, intercepted, San Francisco's got it, Tony Parrish. Is it picked? Yes! 49ers, Parrish! Throws on the run. Parrish picks it off at the 33. This fifth week in a row with an interception. Tony Parrish's remarkable streak of turnover on interceptions, that is seven on the year. You can be sure the Niners' defensive line shares in the accomplishments of their teammates. Quarterback misfires were often due to constant pressure from San Francisco's impressive front four. Bryant Young, Andre Carter, Anthony Adams, and John Engelberger helped force 37 takeaways in 16 games, making the 49ers first in the NFC in causing turnovers. The front four also formed one of the NFL's best run defenses, holding opponents to an average of 57.4 yards at 3Com Park. In Week 7, the Niners would host the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a team not known for their offensive prowess, proved no match for the 49ers' defense. En route to avenging their playoff loss the previous year, the Niners held the Bucks to 61 yards on the ground and kept constant pressure on Brad Johnson. Right into the hands of Mike Rump. He's back to the 40-yard line with the interception. Dilger makes the tackle along the Niners' sideline. However, the Niners weren't the only skilled defensive front on the field. Warren Sapp, Simeon Rice, and Anthony McFarlane would line up against an offensive line relying on reserves and a game plan to shove the ball straight up the gut. Playing most of the season with a torn ligament in his foot, Jeremy Newberry, recipient of the Ed Block Courage Award, anchored the line at center. Together with veteran tackle Scott Gray and versatile fill-ins Kyle Kosar and Quame Harris, the 49ers established a commanding run game. Backs Garrison Hurst and Kevin Barlow followed the red jerseys to a total of 212 rushing yards, often sliding untouched through cavernous running lanes. He's got room right up the middle. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. He's to the what a job up front. You can't say enough about those guys and the job that the offensive line has to do. The line also provided the only blocks when quarterback Jeff Garcia connected with familiar target Terrell Owens. Tampa Bay mounted several drives in the second half. But the Niners' defense, charged by a screaming, sold-out crowd, were able to seize momentum each time. The howling for the defense is down here. Steps up in the pocket, throws a pass. It's deflected, caught, deflected again. 49ers have it, bringing it back. Julian Peterson, interception San Francisco. Peterson to the 40, all the way back out to the 44-yard line. Wow, what a play. I'll tell you, what a tremendous physical effort. This is what we talked about all week. Physical on the offensive front to get that running game going. I'll tell you, let's hear it for that offensive yeah. Yeah. Defensively, I'll tell you what, what a hell of a performance. Yeah. 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 I don't know about that chance. Oh, baby. I'm going to have to show him. I'm going to have to show him the chance. The champ is here for the ghetto, for the ghetto. Oh! Announcing his presence to the opposition was a Sunday routine for pro bowler Julian Peterson, but his ability to sack the quarterback often allowed a more personalized introduction. Peterson and fellow linebackers Jamie Winborn, Jeff Aldrin, and Derek Smith formed the heart and strength of the 49ers' defense. Their efforts helped the 49ers earn 42 sacks, the second highest total in the NFC. Their ability to stop the pass was matched only by their prowess on the ground. Derek Smith hit a milestone, 
breaking a team record with 179 total tackles. Albrick and Peterson also compiled more than 100 tackles each. Week 9 would showcase a rematch between the revitalized Niners defense and the Rams offense. In their first meeting, a Rams kick sailed through the uprights to win in overtime. The first kick in game two would jumpstart the Niners into overdrive. Here's Wilkins' kick from our left to our right. High in the air and coming down to Cedric Wilson at the four yard line. He goes right into the middle of the field. Cuts to the right side. Gets outside to the 30 to the 35. He's got one man to beat on the right sideline. Seahorn. He's past Seahorn. He's down the sideline. He's to the 10. Five. Touchdown. 49ers. 95 yard opening kickoff return touchdown. With momentum on their side, the Niners defense took the field and had one of their best games against the run. The Rams could only scrape together nine yards on the ground and eventually gave up trying. When they shifted all their efforts to the passing game, the linebackers were unleashed. Bulger fell under constant pressure. He threw two interceptions and was sacked five times. And the Niners come at him again and grab him. I celebrated so much on the sack. I had no legs left. You gotta, you gotta learn when to celebrate, when not to. Third down is the best down. But Peterson's advice didn't always ring true. On second and ten. Pressure's come on and he is hit by Brian Young. Ball is loose. And Derek Smith has it for the 49ers. He'll have it at the 15. San Francisco gets a big, big turnover. Though the Rams offense was on the blink, there was no guarantee the Niners would fare any better. An offense that had been start and stop all year took the field with second string quarterback Tim Rattay. In the first start of his career, Rate showed uncanny poise from the first snap, connecting with tight end Aaron Walker for 22 yards. Rate continued to keep his cool while marching down to the Rams' five-yard line. Eighth play of the drive, the first third down for San Francisco, third and goal. Rate straight back drop. He has a chance at the end zone, and it's caught. Touchdown. Rate continued to move the ball leading the Niners to five scoring drives in the game's first 33 minutes and producing one of the most memorable plays of the year. Throws it downfield. He's got a man. Brandon Lloyd dives into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. What a catch by Lloyd. Nice pass. Yep, very nice. By Tim Rate, who has looked very composed. A nice pass from Rate. Good concentration on the part of Brandon Lloyd, the rookie out of Illinois. That's what being a 49er wide receiver is all about. Wow. In the last few decades, no franchise has had a better formula for creating great receivers than San Francisco. Keeping with tradition, the 49ers have developed a young and talented core of receivers in speedy Cedric Wilson and Brandon Lloyd, a rookie who has already achieved a handful of incredible highlights. Wilson's speed and Lloyd's athleticism also contributed to the improvement of the 49ers special teams. The special teams player of the week honors awarded to Cedric Wilson and Terry Jackson reflect the efforts by the entire squad. Though overlooked from league recognition, Jimmy Williams and Dwayne Carpenter's aggressive pursuit of the ball helped force five turnovers, at times providing a knockout punch to the opposition. Coming off a near flawless game in his first NFL start, Tim Rate stepped into the lights of Monday night and on to the national stage. His ability to play consistently at a high level was in question, but on the third play of his second drive, he would silence the critics. And back to throw is Rate. Rate going for it all, way down the left sideline. He's got it, the defender falls down. A pinpoint, perfect pass. By Tim Rate. He has come on so well, it is awesome. Rate completed 21 of 27 for 254 yards, earning a quarterback rating of 130.6. But he wasn't the only playmaker to shine in front of a national audience. Milo breaks outside, cuts to his left, back up the middle, moves to the right side of the field. He's down the sideline. 40, 30, 20. Unbelievable play. Touchdown, 49ers. Wow. 
Following kickoff, the excitement would continue. The kickoff is taken by Randall L. He moves in the middle of the field, starts to get to the outside, fumbles the ball! I think San Francisco's got it! They do! At the 28-yard line! The hit was by Dwayne Carpenter. What a good special teams player he's been. On the first play after the fumble, Rate threw his second touchdown of the night, helping the Niners to score twice in 14 seconds. Looking the other way, past the left sideline, he's got his man, it's called Beasley! Touchdown, 49ers, left corner of the end zone! A perfectly timed pass, and it's a good old touchdown pass for San Francisco. And the Steelers have let it get away. Fullback Fred Beasley's diving score marked his first and only touchdown of the year. But stats don't mean much to the most versatile player in the 49ers offense. Proving to have the sure hands of a receiver, Beasley can be implemented into all phases of the game. But it's his ability to read defensive formations and lay bone-crushing blocks that has drawn attention from his peers. His consistent domination over potential tacklers earned him his first Pro Bowl berth. Perhaps the most appreciative of his talent are the backs that run behind him. Starting against the Cardinals in place of an injured Garrison Hurst, running back Kevin Barlow's focus would be following number 40. We'll have a great one today. After winning four consecutive home games, the excitement at 3Com Park had reached an all-time high. Fans witnessed the emergence of a great defense, an up-and-coming quarterback, and now, the future of the 49ers running game. Led by Fred Beasley and center Jeremy Newberry, Running back Kevin Barlow rushed for a career-high 154 yards, including a 46-yard touchdown. Hand off to Barlow, big burst up the middle. He keeps his balance, goes to the right sideline, 25-20, down to the 15, down to the 10, another block of the 5, into the end zone, touchdown 49ers. Absolutely amazing, just keeping his balance and just so big. This guy's the real deal. What a run, what a brilliant run. And this one is 44 yards for Barlow. Technically his first start, the game helped Barlow achieve the 1,000-yard mark for the first time in his career. Okay, man, let's be physical for 60 minutes, right from the start. Kick it off, we return it, doesn't make any damn difference. Boy, I can't wait the game time. Let's be physical as hell on these guys. On the road for the last time in 2003, the 49ers were determined to get their first win wearing white jerseys. On the first play of the game, the Niners set the tone. McNabb back to throw on first down, throws to the right sideline, and it's picked off. And who else but Tony Parrott brings it back up to the 40. He's to the 50. He's down to the 48-yard line. And so Tony Parrott, his remarkable season, continues with his eighth interception of the year. It didn't take long for the offense to cash in on the field position. After a fake to Barlow, rolls to his right. Now he's going to start running. He runs to the left. He throws a pass to the left sideline. It is caught. And diving into the end zone, touchdown Barlow. With the Eagles battling back, the Niners needed a score to swing the momentum before halftime. Front, the Niners' defense held strong, shutting out all Eagles' offensive production in the third quarter. With his seventh sack, Peterson tied as the NFC's top pass-rushing linebacker. Fellow teammate Kevin Barlow, on the other hand, had no trouble getting the ball. With a career-high 30 carries, he ripped through the Eagles' defense for 154 yards, tying his highest output of the year. Clearly his best game of the season, Barlow also caught three passes for 33 yards and scored two touchdowns. The handoff, slanted in, Barlow, touchdown, 49ers. Kevin Barlow putting on an amazing show today. Up by five, the Niners went for the two-point conversion to solidify the lead. 
fade pattern and Zong Lloyd catches it. He's got the two points. Brandon Lloyd, I guarantee you, he will be one of the go-to men next year. And San Francisco gets a full seven ahead with 5.03 to play. After forcing the game into overtime, the Eagles chose to take the ball, putting San Francisco's defense on the field. This is how I like it. Woo! Time to play, man. This is what big-time players make this big-time play. You feel me? Familiar with the situation, the Niners lined up for the third overtime of the year. 28 all, first and 10 at the 21. Wants the throw, throws across the middle. Tony Parrish has an interception. He picks it up, brings it back to the 20. Middle of the field to the 10. He cuts to his left. He's inside the 10. Into the floor. 49ers interception by Tony Parrish, the man who should have been in the Pro Bowl. Ninth interception of the year, his second of the game. Here's the kick. It is up. It is good. San Francisco has one on the road. And a team of character came through with a terrific performance this afternoon to win it 31 to 28. We kept battling, battling, battling. That's such a hell of a lot about the character of this team. I tell you, the guy that stood out, man. Two interceptions. He Tony Parrish and virtually the entire starting defense will return for another year of defensive domination in 2004. And though the face of the offense is changing, it has the advantage of experience, youth, and dedication to achieve number six. In a new era of 49er football.